Hey, Acers. I'm sorry. I'm pretty inconsistent, but I, I try to get at least one of these out a week. Wanted to say hi. Haven't forgotten you. And really, you guys are the main reason why I keep coming back. And I know that you're not too many just yet, and most of you are my older friends, and that's fine. But eventually, I'm going to have friends of all ages here. And yeah, you're my friends. I mean, I have, I have friends that I, you know, there's, that's, that's an interesting thing is friendship. There are people you don't know, acquaintances, and maybe people you say hi to are kind of somewhere in the middle there between people you don't know and acquaintances. Acquaintances are people you actually maybe meet and actually have a few words with. Like, I wouldn't count James Spader as an acquaintance, but I met him once. Once. He was, he was a really nice guy. I met him, met him on, in New York City on my mission. He was outside Prospect Park doing a movie called Curtain Call that was being filmed with Maggie Smith and Michael Caine. So that was pretty cool. Got to see him make an artificial rainstorm. That was really, really, really cool. I, I actually liked that a lot. Um, anyway, so those are kind of some of the people you know. Then from acquaintance to friend. There's another kind of spectrum and stretch there. And, of course, you, the, close, the more you know somebody, the closer you get to them. And then from friend to bosom companion or bosom buddy, as, as um, Diana said, or, Di or Diana and Anne Shirley said in Anne of Green Gables. Yeah, I watched that as a kid. And I'll tell you, Megan follows you and, um, oh, what's her name? The girl that played Annie. You two are two of the biggest reasons why up until I married my wife, I had the biggest crush on redheads, like nobody's business. I, redheads were my jam. I loved redheads. I still do. I still look at a redhead and, and I just kind of go, that's a pretty lady. So I love, I love good flowing red tresses and my daughter didn't have them. And that's okay. That's okay. That's just part of life. And I love my wife's dark hair. I love my wife's dark hair and it's getting silver into it and it, so beautiful. My wife is the most beautiful person in the whole world. She's beyond bosom companion, bosom buddy, or anything like that. She's She goes beyond that. And she is my very, very bestest friend in the whole wide world. And I could not ask for a better person in my life. Are there times she gets on my nerves? Hells yes. Are there times that I get on her nerves? Oh, I'm sure I do. But at the end of the day, we're happiest because we can be with each other so that's kind of the spectrum of friends and the thing is is that gaming and especially gaming in a difficult situation can lead to really tight excuse me really tight friendships like that when you play a game with someone for more than one or two sessions you can become friends i mean i've Game mastered for my my buddy John, who I think watches these videos. Shout out to you, John, if you're if you are watching this. Love you, brother. He's become one of my dearest friends, not just because we have so much in common, but also because hey, we we got introduced to each other through my gaming and my game mastering, and then through Savage and Other Discord server, and then on into regular life. So that's one of the things that I love about gaming is that takes people from being acquaintances to friends. I mean, even after four hours at the table, even if it's just a one-shot, you leave that table most of the time as at least decent friends. Sometimes even numbers are exchanged, and you, you're like, hey, I'd like to keep in touch with you after this, after this convention or whatever. Now, mind you, I've only done two conventions so far, really. Well, okay, three if you count last year's um, Fanex. But Really, I've only done two or three conventions, and the two main conventions I've done so far are the Halloween conventions put on by Pinnacle Entertainment, which they announced they're doing a third one. So that's pretty darn cool. Um, anyway, it the gaming takes us from being friends to being, or it takes us from being acquaintances to friends. People that we've never met before can become friends just through gaming, and you game with somebody long enough, and they do become tighter than friends. They, they do become 
And they become more than just friends. They become best friends. And that group that I gamed with from Lehigh, they were... They, some of them still are my very best friends in the whole world. Jeremy went on, ended up going on his mission after I came back. And his two years went so fast, partially because we were gaming the whole time and we just it just didn't even hit a road bump. I and mean, there were a few other people who came in and left. I mean, there was um, one of the guys who came in was a guy named Matt. Um, he came in right actually before Tobin passed. And I'd known him in high school. He was, He's actually older than me. And it ended up that Matt, after Tobin died, I think I mentioned him in the video, one or two videos ago, but Tobin took his own life, but was on a medication that caused really bad things to happen at a psychological and mental level. And, and yeah, he ended up taking his own life. So, and if you're feeling like doing that, and you can't, even even gaming can't keep you from wanting to commit suicide, talk to somebody. Talk to a professional. Talk to somebody who can help you to process those feelings and emotions and thoughts. Therapy is okay. Therapy is absolutely okay. I've had some myself, especially after my wife almost died. Yeah, that best, the very, very best friend in my whole world. She almost died of septic shock about nine years ago. And that's a whole story for another time. But I'll tell you this much. It was creativity and gaming that got me through that. And faith. And that's something I will not shy away from. I won't change it for these YouTube channels or anything. I know that it was my faith that helped me get through that. And it was faith of others and myself and everyone that helped her get through that. So that said, um, I, cause I, you know, I was thinking about it. I can't remember when I actually, I can't remember when I actually found that time to go game with the guys at UVSC at the time, UVU. But I remember playing the mage game there and that was a lot of fun. And those guys came to my farewell when I went on my mission. And not all of them were LDS. And so it was pretty cool. Um, I came back on my mission and um, got back together with a friend of mine with whom I'd done theater when I was like 13, 14, 15 years old. I, my mom had been involved in a community theater in the round there in Linden, Valley Center Playhouse. And... One of my fr one of the guys who became a friend of mine there was a guy who went to Pleasant Grove High School. His name was his name was J.C. Carter, and J.C. Um, and I met up again after my mission, and he and I really just oh, excuse me but one of those bad days. I'm tired. Anyway, J.C. and I met up after my mission and. We, I think, I went back and did a play or two at Valley Center or something, and somehow, he, with him being one of my directors or something like that, um, he and I ended up hooking up to start playing role-playing games, and then, uh, it, awesome enough, it was Mage the Ascension. And so I, um, I ended up getting involved with him and some other buddies from Pleasant Grove. We'd, I'd drive all the way down to Provo. And I would play for hours there every every week. Um, that was really a lot of fun, and we played. He did something though with Mage, that, that or kind of with the World of Darkness that made it even better. And this is kind of one of the first places where I saw creativity writ large, and that we took he took all the all the um, storyteller system stuff and he wanted to play superheroes in that universe so he made he made hero the gifted and he used some powers from vampire the masquerade like celerity and things like that and you know he changed the it changed it so it didn't like require blood points and things like that and then he took 
um, and made his own powers to fit this feeling for superheroes in this world of darkness. And we actually ended up going up against a mage. Um, I had one of my favorite characters of all time, uh, a character that I will absolutely love forever. And that is a character that um, um, his code name was Wraith. And he was, he had been basically the the short version of the story and i should tell the whole story of him sometime because jc and i came up with it together and it was about how he was a how he had been a scottish kid who had gone to who had been half german and he'd gone to germany and become a, a master brewer and wanted to be a brewer or his, no his, his dad had he his dad had gone to germany and married a German woman, become a master brewer, brought German brewing back to England, and their beer was the best. And then he had two, the, the master brewer had two sons, John, my character, and I can't remember it was his brother's name, but John and his brother. And John was being groomed to take over the brewery, and he didn't really want it. And um, they brought over his grandmother from Germany. And so he was kind of raised by her and his mother. And so he spoke fluent German as well as English. And the brother who, the younger brother who wanted the brewery, he wasn't, wasn't getting anywhere about getting the brewery. So when their father died and left John the brewery and John Bruce Ferguson, the third, you know, nice, nice, good Scottish name. Um, anyway, John got the brewery and, and all the, titles and lands and everything like that because um just because he was the the oldest and then the younger brother got a million pounds sterling it made that much and after the funeral they swapped they just changed sides and each headed the other the, their own inheritance and went away john put his money into a swiss bank and went out on his own and um became a a, a spy in Germany during World War One, and during that time he performed admirably and was brought back to be. So I guess I'm telling you the whole story kind of here, or the at least his background. He was brought back to be, um, or to be given a special a, a special award for his bravery as a spy during World War One for the king, and as the king was getting ready to pin the the award to his chest a spy a german spy who had swapped or ended up somehow in this award ceremony group he tried to kill the king and john had who had been wandering around the streets of london never actually been there before the war he'd gone into a curiosity shop an old shop that suddenly appears in the back alleys Ooh, yeah i love that trope it's a great trope and i should talk about tropes sometime so i'm going to actually make a note to talk about tropes in another episode i think i might have already mentioned tv tropes but we're really going to talk about tropes um, so i'm taking a note anyway um so john had stopped in the curiosity shop and bought this medallion and had dropped it in the shirt pocket of his dress uniform so this german spy pulls out a gun he dives in front of it takes the bullet right there in the medallion and then takes a couple more to the gut um the king in seeing John's bravery and saving his life, the king knights him right there and sends John off to the best hospital to be taken care of. They take the bullets out of his gut, but the medallion, it has, it's got the dent in it. And he finds out that this medallion, it came out of something called the black pullet. And he goes around the world on Indiana Jones, like quests through the 1920s as he tries to, as he finds out more and more about this black pullet thing. And then finally he gets it all put together and and he finds that the last section has spells in it. And he, like any good occultist at that point, he goes ahead and reads, and he gets the primers and everything, and he reads the spell after he translates it. It's a spell for immortality, but he screws it up. He screwed up. Instead of, he was supposed to join the soul to the body to make it himself immortal, but he joined the body to the soul. He switched those two words. And so he made the body intangible. And he makes it so so he doesn't age and he's he's now immortal basically but he's a ghost a living ghost and he fights in world war ii he fights against 
against the German side villains and he gets actually killed. He sacrifices himself in the big final battle against a de in, against this demonic evil thing that was called Holocaust that was part of this whole thing and the Holocaust demon thing destroyed him. It, it scattered his ashes or it scattered his atoms and he uh, was placed with all of his gear, especially two um, 45 um, semi-automatics that he'd been given by some American superhero cohorts. He was part of the Lightbringers um, during the during the war. That was the name of their special superhero unit for the Allies. And they put him in. They put what ghost ashes they could of him in his coffin, his Lord's coffin, and his family crypt. And then he wakes up 50 years later in the the 1990s and the world has changed and that's where i started my characters with the world changed and so he's a man out of play uh, you know kind of captain america but kind of my own spin on it i guess um you know he was his powers were intangibility and um he could actually push himself through to become tangible and anything that like he could shoot his ghost gun and it would solidify after leaving his aura and also he could um see auras and stuff like that and he could actually eventually see into the the darkness the umbra so that was that was my character and he was a lot of fun and um he's again one of those memorable characters i mean i struggled with him he almost died well he almost not died but you know because he can't really die but he almost got redusted a couple times during that adventure and it was a really fun adventure and, and those friends that i made while doing that especially um, a couple of JC's friends from Pleasant Grove, Ryan and Ken Thorne. Um, they became two of my best friends that I spent hours and hours and hours with afterwards. We'd not only would we game together, but we'd go shooting together and we'd go see movies together. I mean, we went and saw um, Monsters, Inc. with its opener of um, For the Birds. So it was the second Pixar movie. It was supposed to, it was going to be really cool. And, Oh my goodness, I never laughed so hard in my life than for, with Pixar's for the birds. And that's what gaming is for. And we just this last week to and just to kind of catch you guys up, I last Tuesday we really didn't do any grown up gaming because the, the grown ups weren't really there. And that's fine. You know, I, I only run the Tuesday grown up game if there's enough grown ups there to run it, if enough parents are still sticking around. Um, then, um, Wednesday I ran, um, let's see, what am I running? Oh, I'm running Disaster at Grand Atomica again, this time for my group at work. And then, fr um, Thursday I went into Mythos and I ran, um, Moon at the Edge of Oblivion. And I wasn't quite satisfied with my work there. I, it was good. It, it came out okay, and we were able to wrap the story up, but I wasn't quite able to... I wasn't quite able to do that. Um, I didn't... I wasn't satisfied with the ending of it, so I'm going to try again. I'm going to maybe try and make some better pre-gens for it that make pre-gens who specifically can interact with it, but also make some pre-gens who are willing to, like, impulsively start shooting the spawn and get them into some fights. So that's going to be coming up next. Um, then, um, so that was Thursday. So Wednesday I ran. Thursday I ran. Friday I went into the office and ran some more disaster at Grand Atomica for a group there, um, including some guys from accounting and stuff like that. And, and on the whole, I always have like five, give or take five people in the in the gaming room at work. Um, then Saturday, um, I didn't have any gaming. Was going to have some this Saturday, but. Um, Deadlines hell on earth, but that didn't work out. And then Sunday, um, yesterday, I actually got to run uh, or play my character. Play a character I know I actually, oh, well, I get to play once in a while. But I'm playing, I'm playing Crazy Harry Callahan. Yes, I, I mashed up two pop culture characters, and Crazy Harry is an explosives expert, but he's not an explosives expert as in can throw up a telekinetic shield and and or telekinetically reach out and pick up bombs and stuff like that but what i do do is i'm a precognatic or not precognitive I, I have precognition and i can actually see if 
cutting the red wire is a bad idea. <laughs> so there's that. And um, we really actually had a really good coordinated effort in time there. Um, the first time we had some allied NPCs that GM kind of took away from me last time. Darn it. <laughs> but we had all six, all five of the team there. So it was, it was a good time. Um, I'm the, I'm the combat engineer for the team. So ended up throwing in flashbang grenades and smoke grenades when we were up against a, a werebear and a werecat, but the werecat got taken out really quick by our sniper or by our wetworks guy. So it was a lot of fun. And I played with John again. Hi buddy. Um, and my buddy, Peter, love you, buddy. You're awesome. And David, and then a couple of Peter's friends, um, Eric and Gary. So yeah, you guys are all awesome. I had a great time. I want to thank you, Peter, for running that game. Um, I'm looking forward to the next session and we're just having a great grand time. And I just want to also say that I'm having a great time with you guys here on the ACE channel. Um, I'm going to rename it eventually once I figure out how to do that. Then. So I'm st there's still a lot about the computer side of stuff that I don't know. I've been messing around with computers since my dad brought home an 8088. No, actually, since my dad got that commode door, I mean Commodore VIC-20 when I was a real little kid, like 8081, something like that. It had a cassette tape backup. And then, um, and then he brought home the 8088. We had a thing of DOS 2.0 and we're using that floppy to boot up the and this is something that you guys might not know the reason why your hard disk on your computer your hard drive it starts at C drive C colon and this this is the reason why is because originally the first floppy drive was the A drive the second floppy drive when we had two parallel floppy drives and you had to switch between the two I type in B colon enter and that would transfer me from the A drive to the B drive. And then the C drive was the first hard mounted disk inside the computer. And then that's why sometimes you'll have that split into two drives. So it'll be the C and the D drive at the same time. Or then you'll have an extra external hard drive. Like I got a nifty Seagate one here. It's five terabytes. That's my E drive. Or if you plug in a, in a USB drive, that's a E drive sometimes or an F drive, just depending on how many drives you have. But they always start at C with the hard drives because A and B drive were the floppy drives, if you ever get them. Or they can, I guess technically you could have, you could, I wonder if there's a way you could set up the USB drive to be an A drive. Anyway, so I've rambled on long enough. I just wanted to check back in with you and say, hi everybody. It's great to have you. And I love that you're watching my channel. And if I need to ask you to subscribe, then I guess I've got a pretty crappy channel. But uh, if, if you want to have your friends subscribe, send them over this way and have them click whatever, wherever that button is. It's probably down over, like down over there, I guess. You know, because it's cool and they can point right at it. And and, and that's where the, the button is. But I'm sure that I've not even pointed at it. It's somewhere down here. And um, don't even bother with the bell thing if you don't want to. Uh, I'm pretty game either way but i would love to hear from you anytime with questions or thoughts or ideas and um this background of my gaming is going to give you an understanding as to why i think the way i do when i run games so until next time you know i love you guys thanks for being with me and this is mason emerson reminding you to game for good thanks for being an ace